Clock in, clock in. Black guy just walked in. I don't need nobody. Only fuck with niggas from around my way. Fuck how you feel about it. I don't know who's stepping for my session, but they still trying to block it. Had to throw the hate up on my necklace. Bitch, I'm trying to stop it. Bitch, I don't even wash my clothes. I ain't never folded. Had to wipe a nigga nose. Team Black got a stun up, man. Yo. All right, y'all. So I would hate to say I told y'all so. But what in the hell did I tell y'all, bro? Like, oh my goodness, it's playing out exactly how I told y'all it was gonna play out. You feel me? So as y'all see by the title, Alicia Andrews decided to fold on everybody. You feel me? She literally is taking herself out of the whole equation by saying basically everything that was done that day, she was dragged to do it by her boyfriend. Or, or should I say her baby daddy? Cause like, she prego too right now, y'all. She stated to the court in a motion that she was forced to do everything that she had to do that day, the night that Fulia passed away. She didn't want to have nothing to do with it, but she was dragged and she's actually a victim as well, instead of being a suspect. That's her case right now, fam. So obviously, she is really finna cook all them boys like Sir Du Soleil, fam. And to get herself out of the way, which is something that we already predicted since the beginning, y'all. Go back and watch the other videos. We already seen this was coming, bro. So I found a video, man. We're going to watch this real quick and see how much of emotion she did put in to, you know, clear herself from the case, man. But she did put a motion in to compel further investigation into the case, which means it's going to be more people involved. Is gonna find her innocent because she didn't want to do nothing. She was dragged to do it by her boyfriend. She was actually a victim. Like, bro, this case is getting crazy already, bro. Alicia Andrews is turning on everyone, saying Isaiah, also known as Gouda, was abusing her and that Fulio's own people's backdoored him. It's crazy. Let's get into it. Ooh. All right, so it look like this the motion, y'all. The murder of Fulio, a well-known figure in the Jacksonville rap scene, has turned into a highly complicated legal case, with multiple defendants now pointing fingers at one another during the trial. Damn. This the motion right here, y'all. Defendant's motion to compel further investigation into other suspects, the abusive relationship, and other unexplored evidence. So she basically is trying to get them to further investigate more people. So she not only just telling on the folks who is there, she is making sure everybody else who has something to do with it is going to get dealt with, y'all. This is some crazy work, y'all. The case took a pivotal turn when Alicia Andrews' defense team filed a motion to compel further investigation shedding light on potential gaps in the original investigation and arguing that law enforcement failed to explore critical leads that could change the trajectory of the case. At the heart of this motion is the argument that the prosecution focused too narrowly on Andrews and her co-defendants, ignoring other possible suspects who were with the victim on the night of the incident and traveled with him from Jacksonville to Tampa. One of the primary arguments in Andrews's defense is that several key witnesses, many of whom had close ties to the victim, gave inconsistent or contradictory statements during interviews with police. Despite these inconsistencies, law enforcement failed to conduct follow-up interviews or scrutinize these individuals further. These witnesses included people who had traveled with the victim from Jacksonville to Tampa and were with him at the time of his death, yet they were not treated as serious suspects. This failure, according to the defense, suggests a significant oversight in the investigation that could have led law enforcement to ignore crucial evidence. Oh man, so she is telling it all, y'all. She's even telling these people that people who drove with Fulio and who was with him at the incident played a part in the situation me personally i feel like if the law enforcement didn't take what they said too serious at the moment i feel like that was a tactic because i don't think y'all notice like a lot of times law enforcement be doing that like they'll do it on purpose fam they would like let you think that they believe your story the whole time they is watching you and watching your every move just because knowing we're gonna catch you slipping up especially if it's money involved we're just gonna wait to see if you get a big ass fat check or something we're gonna wait and and see if you get paid by this situation. So the whole time, law enforcement could have been gathering further investi uh, 
information in, you know, doing more investigating. It could have been happening the whole time. But this motion is good to kind of save her ass, which is what I knew she was going to do in the first place. Save her ass, bro. Everybody else, y'all boys in some sticky situations, boy. The defense's motion also highlights how the victim had publicly expressed fear and distrust of people close to him in the weeks leading up to his murder. On social media, the victim posted about feeling unsafe and betrayed, going so far as to label his own generation as untrustworthy. He also expressed fear of being backstabbed by those in his inner circle, adding further suspicion that others, not just Andrews, may have been involved in his death. The defense argues that these statements, paired with posthumous music releases that reference these fears were not properly considered by the police. This atmosphere of mistrust, betrayal, and possible grudges within the victim's close group should have been a focal point in, in the investigation, expanding the pool of suspects beyond just Andrews and her co-defendants. She's saying y'all should have been looking at more stuff than y'all actually was looking at, man. And I think they actually going to take this motion into major consideration, especially due to the fact that they're going to go back and look at Fulio's post before the situation happened, how he was saying stuff about close circles and all type of stuff, bro. They're going to look at everything. So, um, yeah, man. Influenced by her partner's manipulation, fear, and control, raising the possibility that she was coerced or acting under duress. Despite this abusive relationship being a known fact to law enforcement, it was not examined in depth, leading to a one-sided narrative that paints Andrews as a willing participant rather than a victim of manipulation. Further complicating the case are the discrepancies in the timeline of events and the movements of the vehicles involved. The prosecution's theory is that Andrews and her co-defendants were following the victim on the night of his murder. However, surveillance footage reportedly contradicts this claim. According to the defense, video evidence shows that the victim and his friends arrived at the location several minutes before any of the defendants were even nearby, and that Andrews's vehicle was parked in a different location for some time before the alleged perpetrators arrived. That's something major for the case, y'all. So basically, they've been trying to say that Fulio and them boys was getting followed the whole time. If they find out they wasn't getting followed the whole time, it's going to be easy as hell to realize, okay, somebody that was with Fulio was giving a location. Somebody who was riding with him was telling them where to go at. You feel me? So it's like, we already peeped that they wasn't being followed the whole time. They just ended up being at every location that they was already at. So... Obviously, they was getting a drop on wherever they were going. In fact, a witness stated that the victim was not being followed at all, casting doubt on the state's theory of a continuous pursuit. If the decision to go to the final location was made spontaneously, as evidence suggests, then it would have been nearly impossible for Andrews to have known the victim's exact whereabouts at the time of the crime. The behavior of other witnesses also raises questions about their possible involvement. Several individuals, including those associated with the alias Fulio, were present at the scene and gave conflicting statements during their brief interviews with law enforcement. The defense points out that some of these individuals were caught lying but were not pressed further or treated as suspects. Their proximity to the victim during critical moments of the night and their conflicting statements suggest they may have more involvement than initially considered. Despite these red flags, law enforcement chose not to pursue further questioning or additional investigation into these individuals. Moreover, the victim's social media activity prior to the murder contained public warnings from individuals threatening him if he attended certain events. Despite these clear threats of harm, law enforcement overlooked this evidence and instead concentrated on Andrews and her co-defendants, ignoring other individuals who had both the motive and opportunity to commit the crime. This tunnel vision in the investigation is another major point of contention in the defense's motion, suggesting that the police may have missed critical evidence that could point to other suspects.
Finally, the defense criticizes how law enforcement portrayed the case to the media. The narrative presented focused almost exclusively on the five individuals who were arrested, while ignoring the larger context of who was with the victim at the time of the incident, and those who had traveled from Jacksonville to Tampa that weekend. This selective portrayal of the case has contributed to a one-sided view in the public eye, reinforcing the idea that Andrews and her co-defendants are solely responsible for the crime without considering alternative theories or additional suspects. In light of these unresolved issues, the defense has requested that the court order further investigation into several key areas. Specifically, they ask for a closer examination of individuals who traveled with the victim from Jacksonville, the abusive relationship between Andrews and her co-defendant, the timeline of vehicle movements on the night of the murder, and the inconsistent statements and suspicious behavior of witnesses who were close to the victim. The defense argues that these areas of inquiry could provide exculpatory evidence, potentially shifting the focus away from Andrews and revealing the true dynamics that led to the victim's death. By bringing these issues to light, the defense paints a picture of an incomplete investigation, one that may have missed key details that could exonerate Alicia Andrews or implicate other individuals who have, thus far, avoided serious scrutiny. As the trial unfolds, the tension between the defendants continues to grow, with co-defendants turning on each other, further complicating the case. Andrews' defense team is now pushing for a broader investigation, one that they believe will reveal new evidence and possibly change the entire outcome of the confusing was the situation it'll definitely be this situation so you telling me alicia was forced to do every activity that she claims she was involved in meanwhile me i already know she wasn't forced to do a damn thing bro especially if it was money involved fam she did not get forced it's just a natural woman instinct when you put them inside a situation like this i'm talking about like the dudes who was just doing this shit like y'all ass y'all tripping fam it's like they needed to use her vehicle so therefore she had to be involved in it they probably didn't already talk to her like babe you gonna ride you down she was like yes daddy anything for you and push come to shove all y'all phoning on each other and is we still not confused it's a whole nother person that's still hiding like bro is still gone where the hell is boy at fam bro bro ducked off real good you feel me but y'all, this is wild, dog. And it's like, I kind of knew this was going to happen, but the fact that it's actually happening is crazy work. I ain't know. It's just craziness. Shout it down, I just folded on everybody, bro. Yeah, she cooked the whole team. Now they looking for further investigation. So anybody who felt like they was in the clear, now they back paranoid. Man, y'all let me know how y'all feel about this in the comments.